Okay, welcome. I'm David Turner with YOL, and joining me is Miriam Bekush of Brain Spa, our new partner, and we are excited to have you here. Hi, Miriam. Hi, it's so great to be here. I'm delighted. And we are here to talk about our new partnership and specifically how we can together help meet your team's well being, leadership, and team and executive development needs. Miriam, you want to take start us up? Yeah, absolutely. So it's such a pleasure to be here. We're so excited about this partnership. And uh, just to get things started, I want to warm up the room here. If you're joining us live, if you're on the replay, drop in the comments, what is your favorite mindfulness practice? Any practice that helps you get centered, gets you in connection with yourself. And I'm going to turn it over. I'm going to turn that question over to you, David. I'd love to hear what is your favorite practice? Well, it's pretty easy for me. I am um... I am often going outside my door. I am fortunate to live in a redwood grove here in Northern California. And um, I practice what the Japanese call Shinrin-yoku, which is forest bathing or taking in the forest. Mm -hmm. And um, I found that it calms me and it's totally accessible. And it's what really saved me during COVID was to be able to just walk outside and walk amongst the redwoods and the nature and um and i do it quite often and um uh so that's kind of what i rely on how about you Miriam? yeah i love that just want to say you know i love being able to hear uh everybody's practice can't wait to read those in the comments because it just gives me it gets me inspired it reminds me of things that really can work really work well uh so for me my favorite practice is really a simple breath focused meditation and that can be, you know, a few breaths that I string in a row, consciously, intentionally connecting inwards, a um, few minutes, and of course, well beyond that. And what I love about it is that it's just straightforward. I can, like, I know the science behind it, so I know that it helps regulate my nervous system. And I feel that happening, which is very cool. You know, I, I can feel myself going from scattered to centered or flustered to calm and steady. And I can use it in a, the heat of the moment, you know, in a challenging conversation or somewhere where I'm really asked to you know, show up in a, in a new way or with my little. So it's, it's very versatile, which I love. But your practice, I just want to say, it reminds me, too, that uh, I need to be doing that a little bit more. I need to be getting out there. And I'm lucky to live here in Montreal next to the St. Lawrence River. And when I get out by the water, I have this huge expanse of water in front of me, huge sky above, and it immediately resets my 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 brain it literally helps me get a clear view and an open mind awesome awesome um so before we get started why don't we for folks who may not be familiar with yol or brain spa why don't we give just a quick overview on on each organization uh and then we can move into kind of a little bit about our partnership and and what we expect from it and what others can expect from it how's that sound Miriam? Yeah, I love that. So um, let me get us kicked off here with uh, Brain Spa. So just in a nutshell, Brain Spa is a organization that is completely de dedicated to bringing mindfulness based practices to the workplace. And we do this because we know the benefits of mindfulness kind of um, help us see that wellness and leadership, right, are two sides of the same coin. It really starts from this, um, starts from within. It starts from our ability to uh, manage stress and get clear and organized and uh, prioritized in terms of where we're going. So we do training, short form, long form, all, as I said, all to support mindfulness going into organizations. And it comes from my personal experience, really, in being in a high paced, fast paced cor in corporate or, or professional uh, job as a diplomat with the Canadian government, so very different than what I'm doing right now, uh, where everything was uh, perfect on paper for me. You know, I was on a upward swing in terms of my career, working on bringing some really exciting um, initiatives to the country and to help entrepreneurs uh, work together. And in doing that, I started to notice that I was feeling very empty inside and I was burning out on the job. And so there was a mismatch somewhere happening for me. And the only thing that helped me from that point onwards 
was to take a step back, connect with myself and use practices such as mindfulness to do that. And when I really started to understand the science behind it, I realized the benefit that this could have for teams writ large. So it's a, it's a real passion of mine to be able to bring teams uh, these techniques and these tools that we know are so powerful. Awesome, awesome. And I think one of the reasons that I feel so aligned in terms of our partnership is a little bit about uh, a little bit related to your origin story too, David. So I'd love if you could share a little bit about that. Okay, I'm happy to. Um, so we started off as a retreat company, uh, as you don't know, uh, nine years ago, and it came out of personal experience. I had a bad job experience and ended up on a yoga retreat in Baja, Mexico. And I had what, um, what I described to people as a cliched middle-aged guy retreat experience. Um, but it was incredibly transformative for me. I slept well, I ate well, I went to this beautiful place. I learned different stress reduction techniques and came away thinking, wow, how do I package this and sell it to other people like me? So we started, my co-founder was my yoga teacher at the time, Carrie Zabel, who was one of the co-founders of Yol. And we came up with this idea of taking people mid-career, mid-life, mid-transition of some sort to beautiful places, giving them some somatic techniques where they could learn how to calm their nervous system, similar to, to your experience, Miriam. Um, and then once they were in this connected mind-body mind -body place, um, be able to give back to an organization that we would have vetted and built a long-term partnership with. And, that, uh, although we've evolved to a pure um, enterprise focused, facing uh, learning and well being company, uh, the kernels of uh, from that from the very beginning are still very much part of part of YOL and part of our programming. The connection experiences we we deliver as part of our as part of our programs, the well being aspect, and also the service aspect. We found early on that by putting individuals or teams. Um, uh, in service to another person or another organization, a lot of the BS that is is natural it, within teams kind of melts away. People get to flow much quicker, get to flow state much quicker, and therefore um, uh, are in a much better place to learn and do just about anything. So um, yeah, so that's, you know, sort of came out of personal experience. And, and now, like you, we're focused on teams and companies and executives and delivering well-being and learning programs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I absolutely love that. It's so meaningful to me when, you know, the purpose is anchored in that personal experience. And I and I also know this is the reason this is how we actually came together. So we were we were introed because I was reaching out to contacts this summer and I was, you know, I was really in this kind of evolution phase with with Brainspot the business and I in reflecting on that, I realized it was we're, we were all in this kind of moment emerging from the pandemic, or at least the crisis phase of the pandemic. I think there's been a lot of evolution and transformation in the air, right? And I was thinking about the needs of customers going forward. And one of my, uh, you know, dear contacts, kind of uh, Susan Burnett from Design Your Life, gave me a whole bunch of amazing, you know, tips, information, got me, kind of got my head straight. And then she said at the very end, she said, you know what, I know a group they're phenomenal. They're doing very similar things than you. They have a service-based approach, which immediately for me said, I, I like, I love that. I want to know more about that. You should connect. And here we are. And here we are. And a sh quick shout out to Susan Burnett and the Design Your Life program. For those of you who don't know about that program, uh, Susan and her partner, um, uh, Kathy, are just tremendous folks who run a program that was originally conceived by Susan's brother at Stanford called Designing Your Life, which is all about applying uh, design thinking principles to career development and professional development. And Susan reached out to me, Susan is a long time leadership development guru in Silicon Valley and reached out to me likewise and said, you need to meet Miriam. She's doing similar things to you all and there could be a great partnership there. And six months later, here we are. So um, we are extremely fired up about this partnership and particularly in how uh, Miriam's got just a world-class team that adds bench strength to, to our team. Um, we kind of, as we look out at the world over the next year or two, we're seeing a real yearning for connection. We were doing almost entirely, entirely in-person experiences pre-pandemic, pivoted like a lot of folks did to offering virtual well-being programs. And now we're super excited about bringing back the in-person stuff uh, and connecting it to the virtual stuff that we've been doing. 
And um, we just see this real yearning for teams to want to reconnect with one another uh, in person, whether they're in a distributed arrangement or a remote first arrangement or some other form of hybrid arrangement. Um, there's a yearning for connection, uh, which is what we've been all about from the beginning. And um, while we're predominantly West Coast based, we work with global companies. We work uh, you know, with a lot of companies based on the East Coast, um, big brands and so forth. Um, but most of our in-person stuff to date has been has been West Coast based other than the international stuff. Um, and what Miriam's team brings to us in addition to great programs and, and content and people is this ability to scale uh, on the East Coast and into Canada. We have a, a small team on the East Coast right now and now we have an, an extended team, particularly as people are, uh, you know, companies are demanding more on-site meetings and leadership offsites and so forth and training. So i um, super excited and super excited to be working with you. Yeah, same. It really, just exactly what you said. Could not agree more. Uh, so for our customers, you know, for our combined customers, what we really see is that opportunity, as we said, to have the, you know, the, the folks on the ground really be able to meet you in person, continue our, you know, our digital offerings, continue to continue uh, to operate globally with a wider array, array of uh, time zones that we can cover. Um, but truly, when it comes to those in-person opportunities that we really see the need for and also the interest in, uh, we now have this, this great combined uh, team of facilitators to, to offer. Terrific. And then beyond cool. that, I think let's let's touch on the programming as well because you were mentioning that you know that it, we're also really excited about the expanded portfolio, the expanded um, service offer that we can bring to customers, and this is in combining forces and leaning into our expertise. So why don't you get us kicked off with that? Sure. So we have a number of offerings which you can find for those of you who are not familiar with us. You can find out a little bit more about it at experienceyol.com, our website, experience. Yol.com. Yol, for those of you who don't know, is Turkish for the path, the road, or the way. I was just um, <laughs> and uh, anyway, we've got a number of programs, but we're super excited to be offering um, a couple of programs in particular to Miriam's customer base. Uh, and uh, one is a new leadership program that we launched in the fall called, called Courage, which is a cohort-based experiential leadership program for uh, emerging and senior leaders. There are three six-hour modules, and uh, the program is focused on um, increasing leaders' ability to adapt to change, um, boosting human skills such as empathetic leadership and authentic leadership, and, and, and teaching them how to more skillfully combine team and company values um, within their own leadership styles. So it's really, it's all about humanizing leadership, uh, which is very topical for the here and now. Um, Gartner did a, a report uh, a few months ago and, and spoke directly to leadership and management effectiveness being the number one priority for HR in 2023 and even going deeper and talking about humanistic leadership, uh, adaptive leadership, authentic leadership, empathetic leadership and so forth. So um, super, we're super excited about this program and really excited to bring, the, bring that program to Miriam's customers. Um, in addition, um, these reconnection experiences, we've been calling them reconnection days and other things over the years. Um, but, you know, to the point earlier about the need to, to be together and connect with teammates, we are excited to offer our reconnection experiences uh, more broadly, uh, in-person experiences, single day and multi-day experiences that typically would involve um, some well-being programming and some shared service engagement programming and some learning as well as connection exercises and empathy exercises and, and other just fun stuff to bring teams and people together um, that, you know, maybe working in, in, again, distributed or hybrid or remote environments. So, um, so yeah, so we're, 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 we're excited about that. And Miriam, why don't you talk about a little bit a little bit about the Rainspot program. Yeah, I, I will. I will. I have a couple programs that I can't wait to share more about. And just before I get there, I really want to underline how really wonderful these two programs that you mentioned are and, and the whole suite at Yule is fantastic. We really wanted to highlight today those places where we have some really strategic overlap in terms of you know the values, the alignment. You can all you expect the same high level service, the same high level delivery that you always get from Yule from you, you get from Brainspa 
end, you get this expertise from me. What I see in Courage in particular, which is new for those of you who've been tracking and, and working with BrainSpa over the, over the years, are, is this cohort-based approach right, to doing leadership training, which I, I think is really, really important, especially after um, especially after a number of years where there's been so much put on, on shoulders of leaders, there always is, but it's particularly in the last few years, there's been high demands um, and, uh, and a need to replenish. So I really see this, this program as, as being uh, such an important offering, uh, one that I'm truly excited to, to bring forward uh, to, our, to our networks. And on the reconnection days, you know, I shared this the other day on LinkedIn and I, I just feel compelled to, to mention it here now which is, I think that, so when, when I first heard Yul had this, you know, mindfulness-based approach to service leadership, service uh, engagement, right, I, I immediately, it immediately caught my attention, and I, and I realized it's because it resonates deeply with a personal experience I had while I was working on a team where we were under a lot of, you know, a lot of stresses, uh, and going through a crisis, which was Hurricane Sandy at the time, and the team uh, came out of that a little bit fragmented, Right, because everybody everybody had had a different experience through that crisis, and the response that the system, right, the you know the team offered through that crisis, with and and you know governments beyond that, was uh, something that people were questioning or struggling with or not yet fully integrating. All this to say, the single most important thing that we did as a team was go on a day of service and do a day of volunteering. It brought people together in a way that I can that I, after having worked side by side for years with folks hadn't been achieved. So I think this service based approach when it's combined with a very intentional learning opportunity, right, that goes beyond again, just that knowledge, but taps into kind of the somatic based learning rewiring of the way that we behave and connect with others is so powerful and so profound. So I'm really, really, I just wanted, I had to say that I'm really excited about Thank you. Uh, bringing that program forward to, uh, to our networks as well. And so the couple of programs that I wanted to, to mention on the brain spa side is, uh, so let me start with mindful labs and, and really truly all of our programming, as I mentioned, mindfulness based programming that we bring to businesses, we always have an element of the design of the program that has to do with embedding and sustaining the practice. Because at the end of the day, mindfulness as a practice, right? There's mindfulness, the state of mind, I like to say mindfulness, the state of mind or the state of being and mindfulness, the tools and the practices. At the end of the day, learning the tools and the practices is relatively straightforward. The challenge comes from actually uh, committing to practicing this on a regular basis, actually committing to showing up differently moment to moment in challenging situations, right? So how do we help our, um, how do we help participants really allow this tool to make a huge difference in their life, right? Have, um, and so embedding and sustaining is key. Mindful labs, right, is one of our answers to be able to do this. Once people are kind of oriented, situated around what is mindfulness at work? How does this, you know, how do I start to, 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 to put these practices into play? And we like to introduce not only uh, formal, but also bite-sized practices, right? Really important ones that you can integrate into your workflow. The lab series allows people to get really creative and do a deep dive around how to apply mindfulness to a particular situation at work that can be challenging or a particular situation at work that we see happen a lot. So a couple of examples would be, how do you manage stress? How do you do time management? priority setting in a mindful way. How do you apply these practices to these particular situations? So we're really excited about the Mindful Labs, bringing them uh, to uh, partnering with Yol and bringing them, bringing them to a wider audience. And we've seen lots of success with us from our clients in government and retail and financial services. So, um, so we're excited to see what happens next there. And then the uh, second program that I wanted to highlight is Leading with Mindfulness. And this is an eight week or eight module course that is for intact teams that want to go deeper with how do we start to not only understand mindfulness for ourselves as individuals and mindfulness in our interpersonal relationships, but also how do we become agents of change or, or how do we have agency in creating a culture of mindfulness around us? So we really take teams on a journey around how to deploy these tools in a way that they, they become leaders not only from within, but leaders within the context of their team as well. Terrific, terrific. And we can't be you know, sort of more thrilled to add these to our suite of offerings. Um, 
uh, we see real demand and it really just sort of adds adds to our portfolio in a um, you know in a way that that we've we've sort of touched upon in your programming before but haven't offered as as focused programming um, and it it uh, these offerings also um, fit in perfectly with our other well-being programs um, uh, around resilience and around stress reduction and mental fitness for teams and and mindful movement. So uh, we can now offer, you know, kind of more focused shots around mindfulness, um, uh, you know, with, with Miriam's programming, Miriam and our team's programming. Um, should we talk a little bit about um, the future, Miriam, and, and what we see you know, coming down the pike, do you want to talk a little bit about what you see coming down the pike and how you see brain spa evolving over the next, you know, couple of quarters or so? Mm -hmm, absolutely. So, well, evolution is a, uh, it's constant. <laughs> That's my first, my first thought there, but truly, you know, we're excited, just as you said before, we're excited to be returning to in-person. We were an in-person first and only company that just like all of us went online and uh, learned a lot and are excited now to be able to straddle all, you know, follow all the possibilities out there, whether it's online, whether it's in-person, synchronous, asynchronous, a combination of all of the above. So that's been a really interesting evolution that we're excited about playing with going forward. And as I mentioned, the theme of embedding and sustaining, I think this is another area where we continuously are innovating and challenging ourselves to think about ways of layering different types of support through our programming so that we can really accompany a participant from a, you know, a starting point to, a, to a, a, an evolution point for themselves that is meaningful and that has true impact and that we get them there in the most uh, efficient way that is possible. Remembering, of course, that all of these practices have to do with, you know, you know, first and foremost, they're not linear. They're really about an evolution that starts from within and that that grows in a in a nonlinear way. So a couple of specific examples around that are what does it mean to accompany a participant right beyond their in-person experience afterwards with micro learning tools that would accompany accompany their growth uh, job aids of different types um, you know tools that basically take the learning of the moment and help translate them and expand them into a longer time frame so that somebody has a true experience of the benefit of this new sh this shift in being and the shift in behavior so that's what we're really seeing in, for the future and that we're really excited about uh, there's also been a huge, I mean, there's a huge turmoil and change in the market, as we all well know, right? COVID crisis was one of many things actually that happened during that time frame. And as we kind of look forward, we see that kind of having to navigate tremendous change and crisis is a skill, is a, it's a necessity of our times. And, and I'd love to hear you kind of expand on that. Yeah. Um, it's been a crazy couple of quarters for everybody and is likely to continue for at least another couple of quarters. Um, uh, we believe that um, emotional well-being will continue to be a big hot button for employers. Um, and uh, obviously there are a myriad of ways that folks are, are using different tools and different programs to, um, to address you know what is very real in their workforce, and um, and so we're we are um, grateful to to be able to offer some of those tools um, and work with some really forward thinking employers um, who care about their employees. I mean, there's been it's been with all of the layoffs, all the rifts, the recession that's sort of hovering above us. Um, uh, there's a lot of a lot of uncertainty out there. Um, at the individual employee level. Um, we also believe that financial well-being will begin to get more attention this year as employers are, you know, helping employees deal with the impact of recession and higher interest rates and so forth. Um, and um, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but we've got some exciting things um, coming down the pike on on the old side that we're, we'll be excited to to collaborate with with um, Brainspot on as well around financial well-being. Um, uh, when we think about well-being, we think about we about, think about it holistically, right? So emotional, mental, physical, purpose and impact, and financial well-being. And um, there, we have not found a solution out there that's in the marketplace that is addressing kind of holistic well-being. And so we're 
you know, excited about some stuff that we're working on and um, we'll hopefully, you know, be able to provide some relief to some folks. Um, so we're excited about that. I could not, I mean, this is this is really important, such an important area and this, uh, this approach, this vision that really puts forward uh, a complete vision around well-being, uh, I think makes so much sense and is, is needed, is so needed. As we start awesome. to... As we start to close here, I'm just taking the time, we have a few minutes left, and what we thought was we would offer you all a short practice, right? A short mindfulness or centering practice. And then um, we'll be able to send you all off on your way, rejuvenated, refreshed, and uh, hopefully inspired as well in terms of the ways that you might bring wellness and leadership programming to your teams. And so we invite you to uh, drop a comment if you have a question, reach out to us. There's, uh, if you're not already following us on LinkedIn, please go ahead. Uh, our companies, our names, you've got them right here. And um, you're welcome to check out our websites. As uh, David mentioned, we'll drop that information below so that it's easily accessible for you. And of course, just reach out, DM, contact us. We are very happy to book a call with you and explore your needs and see how we best can serve you together. So on that, let's switch gears. You ready here, David? I'm All ready. Right. <laughs> up straight. So we'll close out a very brief practice just to give you, I love to give people a little bit of a sense of what to expect. There'll be just about two minutes, so not too long here. And I invite you to just wherever you're seated or standing, or maybe you're walking around listening to the audio here, see if you can find a little bit of stillness for a moment. So your feet on the floor or on the ground, the surface below you. And if available to you, as David is doing, you're lowering your gaze or closing your eyes just for a moment here. And if it's not possible, you can again find stillness even with your gaze by letting it linger on one particular point, maybe something that's enjoyable to look at. As you come into stillness here and as you reduce the visual sensory input, Take a moment to notice what else comes to the surface. So it might be thoughts in your mind, it might be sensations in the body or sounds around you. Give yourself a moment to observe and notice what's happening. and bring your attention further inwards towards your breath. Noticing the rhythm of your breath. And if you'd like to have something a little bit more concrete to focus on, you can place your hand on your belly or on your chest, noticing the physicality of the breath. And if your mind is wandering, if other thoughts are coming up or you're noticing other things, remember that's completely normal, completely okay. What we're doing here is practicing making the choice of directing your attention in a particular way. And in this case, it's towards the breath. If it feels comfortable, you can take an extra expansive breath here and really follow that full inhale and full exhale without rushing it. And as you return to normal breath, if you had your hand on your chest or your belly, you can release that too. Closing the practice, we'll drop chin to chest, stretching out the back of the neck. Maybe offer yourself a little gratitude here for having taken this moment in your day. Lifting your head back up when you're ready, opening up your eyes. And if it feels fun for you, you can make an extra stretch. Take a nice deep breath as you do so. Kind of wakens up the body if that's something that you can benefit from. And you're set. So I encourage you actually to do this kind of practice. My favorite practice, as I shared with you at the beginning. Uh, regularly throughout the day. And you can see how can it really accompany you in creating a state shift, right? With very little effort, actually.
Thank okay. you. Thank you all. Thank you. It was so great to be in conversation with you, David. I look forward to many more of these. And I do as well. my best to everybody here live on the replay. We very much look forward to being in touch. It was fun to be here together. Thanks, everybody.